Julia Dunaway, and today I'm going to be making some cookies, and these are called breakfast cookies. And I've made so many different variations of cookies over the past couple of years, but I made these recently, and I did my own variations to them. So I've got them to a point now where I wanted to share them with you so that you can make your own, because every time I post pictures of them, when I have them, people always ask me, where's the recipe, where's the recipe, and I really didn't have my recipe out anywhere. I kind of had other people's recipes and old recipes, but nothing really current that you know had my recipe for this one. So that's what I'm doing. And breakfast cookies can be anything. So really they're, they're not all that different. They all start with some kind of grain, like oats, this is rolled oats. And I'm using rolled oats and almond flour equal parts. You can just use rolled oats. You can't just use almond flour, that was too fine. And then all the breakfast cookies have some kind of, usually some kind of nut butter. Today I'm using peanut butter. A lot of times I use almond butter. And then you have to have something to hold it all together. So today I'm using flax, ground flax seed that's made into some kind of like an eggy substance by putting the flax seed with water for a while. And then you have to decide what you want inside your cookie. Like today I'm making chocolate pecan cookies. And this is a 73.5% dark chocolate from El Rey Chocolates. So there's a company called Chocolates El Rey in Fredericksburg that I always order my chocolate from these big three pound bags. And then I'm using that instead of fruit and nuts. A lot of times people will use fruit and nuts. So if you didn't want chocolate, you could use these great organic raisins that don't have anything added. They don't have any oils or anything added to them. They can sell these at Costco. So you could use any kind of dry fruit, any kind of nut. And then the other thing you can do to make them your own special flavor is you can add spices like ginger, almond ginger, or you could add cinnamon, or you could add maple cinnamon flavoring, or any spices you like, cardamom, um, pumpkin spice, apple spice. So you could do anything. You could also add applesauce or apple butter. So if you like a moisture cookie, and mine is perfect for me, but I was thinking that I have other recipes where I've used apple butter. A fourth of a cup of apple butter added to these cookies will make them soft or more like the crumble cookie craze where the cookies are really soft. These tend to be a little bit more crunchy, hard, which I like because they travel well. So let's make a cookie. Let's make a batch of cookies. Like I said, it takes rolled oats. This is a cup and a half. And everything just goes into one bowl, which is so nice. This is a cup and a half of almond flour, which is just finely ground up almonds. And then um, I've got coconut here. And this coconut is shredded coconut. But I find that the shredded coconut pieces are so big, so I take them and I put them through my food processor until they're kind of fine, more like the um, they have another type of coconut that's not shredded, but it's sometimes it's hard to find. Usually, you know, you'll find these shredded coconut, but the pieces can be too big. So I put them through the food process. If you can find some shredded coconut that's smaller, then that's fine, but this one wasn't. Then some other dry ingredients are your typical teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, something you find just about in, in any kind of cookie recipe. And then we just, you know, whisk it together or blend it together with whatever tool you have. This whisk wouldn't really work well with all these large ingredients. I'm breaking up some almond meal. And that's, that's just kind of the basic dry part of this. Then like with other cookie recipes, we add in the wet ingredients. And so for the breakfast cookies, a typical one has some kind of nut butter. So I have three-fourths of a cup of peanut butter. Like I said, I usually use almond butter, but my almond butter was a little bit, you know, scarce today. So I'm using this peanut butter because I had more of it. So I've got the peanut butter, and it's three-fourths of a cup. This does make 12 really good-sized cookies. So that is a lot of peanut butter or nut butter, but really what it works out to be is like one tablespoon of nut butter per cookie. I have a half a cup of maple syrup, and I have a fourth of a cup of date syrup. You could use all of either kind of syrup. You could use all date syrup and all maple syrup. I like to use a combination of both. 
Um, I would have used all date syrup, but my date syrup supply is kind of low right now, and I'm waiting for another shipment <laughs> that hasn't come yet. So that's why I used the date and maple syrup. A teaspoon of vanilla, that gives it a good flavor. And then remember the ground flax seed, two tablespoons mixed with five tablespoons of water. And you can see it turns into kind of this, it looks like almost like an egg, egg white. So that's what holds the cookies together really well. So those are basically all the key ingredients and then we'll put in our chocolate and nuts. So you mix all these together and um, you know, mix it really well because you want them to not have any, you know, too, any peanut butter sections that didn't get mixed in, although that probably wouldn't bother some people. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my um, pecans, and I've chopped them up by hand. They were just, you know, they were your typical pecan halves. And you, I got those at Costco, but they also have walnut and all kinds of other nuts. Same thing, you cut it up or you can put it in your uh, food processor and chop it up that way. I'm going to use this spatula, this wooden spoon is not, not doing it for me. So yeah, basically you chop your nuts up by hand. If you try to chop them in the food processor, they tend to get really kind of irregular sizes. Some will be gigantic and some will be really small and some will just be like powder and that's not good. Okay, so you see how this is really thickened up just in a short period of time. Last but not least is our chocolate. This is a full cup of dark chocolate. And these cookies are very chocolatey, but remember there's gonna be 12 of them. So it doesn't come out to be more than a little bit over a tablespoon of chocolate per cookie. And how that chocolate looks when you get it from El Rey is they're in discs, they're kind of round, flat discs. They're not chips. The thing about chocolate chips is Chocolate chips often have some kind of coating to keep them from losing their shape. Well, that coating is not very good. You know, I don't think that's something you want to have in your, your dish. So I like to have things that don't have coatings on them to make them hold their shape. I'd rather have this really pure chocolate. The El Rey chocolate, it's hard to find in stores, but you can order it online. And if you don't want to bother with El Rey chocolate, all you have to do is the grocery stores now have all kinds of vegan chocolate. So you can get lots of different things. Okay, so now we're going to get them on the baking sheet. I have a large baking sheet here. If you don't have these super large types, you can just use a, two smaller baking sheets, line it with parchment paper. And then I have, um, this is a, third cup measuring cup, and I'm gonna make 12 of these. I've got some water in my bowl so that my hands don't get all sticky. But I basically kind of pack it into the third a cup measuring cup, and then I will, I'm gonna put 12 of these on my baking sheet. And then I'll show you what I'm gonna do next with them once I've got 12 on here, but I'll put a few on so you can see. They might be a little hard to get out, but you just have to give them a good whack. But be sure, and what I do is I be sure and press them in so that the cookies will not be, you know, too soft. Because that's, see, there you go. And so I'm going to show you what the, I do next. Because that's something that people will say, oh, my cookies fell apart. Well, it's probably because they weren't packed tight enough. So I just wet my hand with water. And then I'm going to just take the cookie, each one, and press it down. And as I'm doing that, I also kind of, you know, um, fix the sides a little because sometimes the sides will tend to get a little misshapen. So that's what I'm going to do. And if some of the pieces are falling off the sides, like these pieces of chocolate and pecans, then all you have to do is pick them back up and put them on the top. They will all kind of melt together. So I'm going to do this with 12 cookies, then we'll come back and get ready to put them in the oven. Okay. The cookies are all scooped out and flattened down, so they're ready to go in the oven. And I found the perfect amount of time was 16 minutes at 350. So in 16 minutes, they'll be ready to go. And 
come back and take a taste. Okay, the cookies are out of the oven. And once they come out, let them sit for about five minutes because if you try to move them to the cooling rack too quickly, they'll just fall apart. So now they've sat here for five minutes. They've kind of firmed up a little bit and I can get them off onto the cooling rack and get them all cooled off. And don't try to plate them or anything until they're nice and cool because they'll start falling apart. But once they're cool, I will put them on my platter. I have this nice big wooden platter from uh, Andrew Pierce Bowls in Vermont. I love that place. So uh, this is it. This is the breakfast cookie recipe and mine are with pecans and chocolate, dark chocolate. And then, uh, as I said earlier, you can make these any way you like. You can make them with fruit, dried fruit, any kind of dried fruit, anything from raisins to cranberries to apricots to pineapple, and add any kind of other nuts that you like, almonds, walnuts, cashews, pecans, and add any spices you like and you know, use your imagination. You can make lemon, dried blueberry cookies with ginger or pumpkin spice cookies with pumpkin spice seasoning and you know walnuts and whatever make them taste more like fall cookies but whatever you do just make them and then how i eat them is i will you know grab one and take it with me for a quick breakfast on the go and put them in the freezer of course they don't last long enough to freeze them here because my husband will eat them too so i hope you enjoyed this recipe if you like my recipes please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also you can follow me in other social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram. I do have a website, chef-julia.com. And I have a lot of things on my website that you can purchase, uh, classes that I've taught on Zoom. And also um, another thing I've started doing in the last year are retreats and they're in person. So you can come and come out to Azel, Texas and cook with me at an eight hour live retreat. And I have openings in June and October of 2023. So if you're interested in that, hope you uh, look that up on my website, chef juliacom And I'd love to meet you. So hope you make the breakfast cookies and enjoy them as much as I do. Can't wait to eat one. They're a little too hot now, but my husband would eat this hot just like that. See you next time. Bye-bye.